TV. Chronographs. I use them a lot. Everything I've owned up until now has been um, done by light. Basically what happens is with a chronograph you have two sensors and they point upwards and in natural light you fire over the sensors hopefully not hitting the chronograph because it's too easily done and the bullet literally casts a shadow over the first sensor which starts the clock running then it, and it goes on go over the second sense which stops the clock and that's what gives you velocity reading. I decided to go up market and get myself something different and this is the Magneto Speed V3. It's a magnetic chronograph. It doesn't rely on light, anything of that nature, so you can shoot in the dark it still work if you really want to. And it also fits the rifle which does as well cut out the fact that you don't have to sort of zero the gun then shoot it for the chronograph you can do the whole thing together so there's, there's a mark one version which is designed for plain barrel this is the mark three the latest one which is really designed with moderated rifles in mind the unit comes in a nice little plastic lockable carry case padded inside and here's what you get this is the actual registering device the screen that contains the menu and functions because there are a number of functions with this these here are spacers that allow you to set the um, the unit up so you don't put a bullet through it and also it's in the perfect condition position to allow pick up each time of the velocity this thing here is called the bayo i think short for bayonet because it actually goes on the end, end of the gun and this is where it is there's, there's sensors here and here this little steel plate is a blast shield Back here is a mounting block for these spacers, as I said before. And you have a strapping and a tightening system, which I always found a little bit on the fiddly side. This rubber plate goes over the top of the moderator and just stops heat transfer to the strapping. And you have two different sorts of cable. You have a pull-out one, if you want it for anything. I'm not quite sure why, but you do. Then you have a standard fixed one with a dog leg at one end and a normal spigot at the other. And most importantly, don't forget, you have this pretty much a quarter inch tube, square tube, and that allows you to align the bayo with the moderator and, and the muzzle. Right, the most important thing is setting the bayo up correctly. And for this, as I already said, you have a number of spacers with rubber anti-slip tops, and you can mix and match these to suit. But what must happen is, and they'll go in, in the crate like this. So what you do, you literally, you don't tighten up it, you just put it on there, slip the, the strap over and hold it so the this section here is flush with the muzzle of the moderator and squeeze it up so as if it would be black locked on and get your aluminum bar, sit it on this pickup section of the bayo and it should sit just under the muzzle aperture. As you can see here, it does. This is an 8mm aperture, so you haven't got a problem. And this is a 6.5mm rifle. But that would equally work well with 308. As you can see here, that's just about right. If it's too high, you can get wrong readings. And if it's too low, you might not get a reading at all. Hence why this is your sort of bar to set it up. So, I've already set it up with a single rubber spacer, because this is quite a fat moddy. That goes on like that. You squeeze it off, as I said before, make sure it's at sort of six o'clock to the gun, and then there's a little strap catch here. So you press that, you pull in on the strap, ensuring that the moderator is flush with this, and then there's a there's a nut here. When you when you do it, it's best to have this nut unscrewed like it is now, and you just wind it in like this, and what it does, it tensions the strap like so and now that's on there very secure from there and then we need to connect up the receiver and the actual brain unit to the bayo so i tend to use this fixed cable here rather than the pull out one and i use the straight jack and it goes into the little aperture at the back here and then it logs into this and as soon as you plug it in the screen changes that's your on off switch it's very basic 
So that's what you get. And what we'll do now, we'll look at the readouts. Okay, let's look at the main screen. This is your menu button. So you go back, which is self-explanatory. You can archive shot series. See here, there's a little micro SD card that pops in and pops out. And it comes with um, a standard slot adapter. So you can put it in your PC, put it in a spreadsheet. Delete shot, again, self-explanatory. It just deletes one shot at a time. Set sensitivity, press that. You've got normal, which is two, because it has a factory setting. Or you can go to custom, select, and you can go from one to 11. Some things like rim fires, I found, I was doing some rim fire stuff the other week, and it wasn't picking up, and I had to wind it up to four, and then it started picking them up. So you just got to fiddle with it. But uh, you, the higher up you go, you have issues, like the lower down you go. It's a matter of finding the, the right balance. But I found that the, the standard setting of two is pretty good. So click, go back there, back again. See, so set sensitivity, we're back to here. Reset series, we've done, clear series of shots. You view archive data, that's self-explanatory. Battery state, state menu. Batteries can be a PP9 or I think a CR123 coin type. They, they recommend different batteries at different temperatures. I've been running a PP9 all since I've had this winter and summer and hadn't any problems with it. Data checker menu, you can select operating modes. You can select feet per second or meter per second and you can select standard deviation to extreme spread. Depending on what you want to do. Let me go down again. Menu card functions. And you can set the backlight. You can have the backlight on all the time, which shows in red, which is a bit weird. But if you don't have it on, every time you shoot, the screen flashes to tell you it's to take the shot. But it's best to have it off because it sucks the battery away. And then reset system, which is, again, okay, self-explanatory. I had some problems with this about four weeks ago. It was, it was registering one shot, and then it, any subsequent shot, it will be the same shot. So... I don't know what was wrong with it. So what I did, I um, reset the whole system and I downloaded new firmware for it, which is these instructions on the website and in the, and the manual how to do it. Loaded them both back up again and it was fine. So it's just a matter of understanding what you're doing with it. Say, I've just really roughed through this. I haven't gone crazy with it, but the manual is very, very easy to understand. It's very easy to operate. And when you're finished, don't forget, just pull the pin and it's off. So I've just shot a string here, as we can see. So it logs each shot, one, two, three. Maximum velocity, 2570. Minimum velocity, 2546. Average velocity, 2554. Standard deviation, 13.5. For a reload, it's not bad. That's shooting about an inch, a little bit open, but good enough. But the, the standard deviation is pretty good, so that's acceptable. Then... If I want to clear it or delete it, go to my menu button, go down. I can do, I don't want to delete one shot, I want to delete everything. So I can reset to series one or clear series of shots, it's up to me. So if I clear a series of shots, I just press that. Current series, yes, do it. And I get back to the screen where I'm ready to record again. Or I could have gone the other way. Go back. Reset series, press again. Then I just go down and it says, yes, do it. So it resets the whole series. You've got two options on clear shots. Plus you can clear single shots as well. So that's it, a brief look at Magneto Speed version three. So I've explained all the points, but if you get one, you've got a decent manual. There's an online manual as well. It also tells you how to download firmware if you need to. I have a fiddle with it. I like it. And if it's raining, if it's dark, if it's light, it doesn't matter because it's a magnetic pickup rather than, than a light pickup. Worth a look, not cheap. I think it's a better unit. It's more portable, certainly more robust. And as long as you set it up properly, there is absolutely zero problem with you blowing the hell out of a chronograph because I've done it before now. I thought I was on and I wasn't. Pulled the trigger and next minute the chronograph self-destructed in front of me. My fault, quite impressive. 
So there you go, it's an option. I think you need to be serious about what you do because of the price. However, you could buy it with a couple of people, make a good club purchase. So from that point of view, then you're getting a high quality chronograph that works well with very good figures for not a lot of money because you don't need to use it all the time. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Tell your friends, support the website, and if you need to speak to me about anything, it's pmore.shootingsports at gmail.com. Remember, don't shoot the chrono.